Despite a gameplay reveal over the summer that was full of juicy details, there's still plenty we don't know about Bethesda's upcoming spacey RPG, Starfield. Between that and the fact it's one of the most anticipated games of the year, the conditions are ripe for fan theories, and the internet is ablaze with prospective Starfield likers and their wild ideas about everything from the game's story, to aliens, to this guy who is convinced that the game doesn't actually exist and is merely a stalling tactic to buy time for Bethesda to make Elder Scrolls 6. A bold prediction. Let's see if it works out for him. In the meantime, why not consider these seven Starfield fan theories so wild they might actually be true, and beware spoilers ahead for… I guess Starfield if they turn out to be accurate. Now I've watched all the Starfield trailers and gameplay demos and Todd Howard TED Talks and I just sort of let them pleasingly wash over me, mostly thanks to Todd's confident tones and sensible haircut. And that's thanks to all of you. However, hardcore Starfield likers have taken everything shown so far and managed to piece together a surprisingly thorough and convincing theory about how the game will start and how exactly you'll come to be adventuring all over space. Mostly based on detective work by Reddit user ExoSoldier over a year ago, Starfield theorists are predicting that the game will cast you as a space miner who uncovers some kind of alien artifact. There are several clues pointing to this theory. For a start, the character creator takes the form of a record locator for something called Argos Extractors, which sounds like the name of a mining company, or possibly a fan company, but come on, more likely a mining company, seeing as mining and resource extraction seems to be a core mechanic in the game. For whatever reason, you end up mining particularly deep on one job. Some have suggested it's a punitive job, to work off a prison sentence or a debt or similar, because if there's one thing Bethesda loves, it's locking you up or having you be a prisoner. I guess you're smarter than you look. At this point, the theory continues, you'll dig up an alien artifact, touch it, receive some kind of vision, and then be visited by someone from Constellation, the space exploration organization mentioned in other Starfield trailers, who seem to have prior knowledge of these kinds of artifacts. So, you found something? The new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? What happens next is a little bit more speculative, but it seems like your meeting is interrupted by a group of space pirates called the Crimson Fleet, and your new constellation buddy doesn't survive, bequeathing you his ship and the watch-like device needed to unlock it, kind of similar to how you get your Pip-Boy in Fallout 4. From this point, you'll join up with Constellation and take over the dead pilot's mission, searching the universe for these artifacts and trying to understand them. Or at least you will, if you're not as easily distracted as we are. One of the key differences between Starfield's spacefaring future and that of, say, a Mass Effect is the apparent lack of aliens. That is to say, not the lack of alien wildlife in general, what with all these beasties going about their business on their home planets, but the apparent lack of intelligent alien life of the sort you can talk to, or fight with, or smooch if that's your thing. No judgement here. The question of whether or not intelligent extraterrestrial life will feature in the game is a hot one, and though certain artefacts might point to the existence of alien civilization, more on those later, we can't tell whether aliens themselves will make an appearance. Except a keen-eyed alien spotter watching the Starfield deep dive might have noticed this mysterious figure standing amidst the trees about two minutes in. The figure appears only for a moment as part of a montage, so who can say exactly what we're looking at here? Except there's no denying the motionless silhouette has the classic shape of a big-headed, humanoid-looking alien of the kind that traditionally zips around in flying saucers and abducts unlucky humans, like, for instance, in the Fallout 3 DLC Mothership Zeta. Good luck to all of us. A closer look at the footage tells us this potential alien encounter takes place on a planet named Algarab 3b, which implies this is an exoplanet orbiting the star Algarab, which is a real star in the constellation Corvus, which has a real exoplanet named HD 104067b, discovered in 2009. Is this an alien? What is an alien doing on Algarab 3b? And can it be smooched? These are the questions. One thing that's remained constant in all these Starfield footage seen so far is these mysterious rotating interlocking ring artifacts like the one seen in Constellation's headquarters. Oh my god, look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. 
There are also these notes as seen on your character's ship, with some sketches and more musings on the nature of the rings. So what are the rings, and what will their purpose be in Starfield? The most common fan theory currently is that these rings will act as beacons or fast travel points that would allow you to instantaneously travel around what is, no question, the largest game world Bethesda has ever created. Others have pointed out, however, that you only seem to be interacting with these rings outside of your ship, and surely you wouldn't want to be teleported across the galaxy without your primary means of transportation. What else, then, could these rings be? Some theorise that they're transmitters, meant to broadcast signals to alien life. Others think they're some sort of artifact detectors that, once activated, will point you in the direction you need to go to find the next artifact in Starfield's main story quest. Whatever it is they do, we won't have to wait long to find out. Fingers crossed it's something actually cool and not just some avant-garde modern art that Constellation decided to buy to class up their office. This is probably the fan theory with the most amount of evidence, but if listening to hundreds of hours of true crime podcasts has taught me anything, it's that sometimes even overwhelming evidence isn't enough. So let's just present that evidence and allow you, the jury, to decide for yourselves. The fan theory is that Earth has been destroyed and is now a desolate wasteland. There's a couple of strong indicators that this is the case. One is that there's a structure on a barren desert planet that bears a striking resemblance to the St. Louis Arch. The other is that in the most recent gameplay video, if you look at the brief glimpse of the Sol system, i.e. our solar system, you'll notice that the third planet out from the Sun isn't the usual blue and green you'd expect from Earth, but instead a dusty orangey-brown sphere. Other smaller bits of evidence include the existence of a Terran Preservation Society, which is presumably trying to recover plants and even antiquities from a post-apocalyptic Earth. There's also a bunch of survivors on a ship who seem surprised to meet another human. You're... human? We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. How messed up do things need to be on Earth that they assumed that the thing knocking on the door was more likely not to be human? There's even a suggestion that this shot of a hastily assembled launch platform with a spaceship buried in the sand could also be one of those human ships attempting to leave a scorched, uninhabitable Earth. I put it to you then, good people of the jury, that Earth is properly effed. The prosecution rests. I've really got to start listening to something other than true crime podcasts. If you played The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you'll no doubt remember Dragon Shouts, the voice-based supernatural powers you gathered as you went through the game that included the famous Fusrodar, <laughs> and a bunch of other ones no one used because they already had the best one, Fusrodar. <laughs> In the Starfield gameplay released so far, we've seen glimpses of what could best be described as powers similar to the Dragon Shouts we saw in Skyrim, or rather, power, the ability to seemingly switch off gravity with your hands. The leading fan theory for how you come across this power, and presumably other powers, is from those alien artifacts we talked about earlier. You dig one up to start the game, and it gives you the power to switch off gravity and make your foes easy targets. But then Constellation sends you out to find more artifacts, and each one you run across gives you a new ability when you interact with it, similar to the word walls found in Skyrim. Be on guard. Those puzzle doors will more often use to lock things in. It remains to be seen if this is the case, but it would be an odd choice by Bethesda to give you one magic power and leave it at that. A range of powers with different applications seems more likely, whether they're all gravity-based or more diverse remains to be seen, but if there's one that slows down time and highlights enemy body parts and gives you your percentage chance of hitting them, please Bethesda, I just need vats. Don't make me aim at things. Being a Bethesda game, people were immediately trying to link Starfield to the Elder Scrolls series in some capacity, including plenty who think that the game will be canonically set in the same universe as that venerable series of games. Admittedly, the evidence for this one is slim, but that's what all good fan theories are about, right? First of all, we have this plant being grown by spacefaring humans in the Starfield gameplay presentation. It looks an awful lot like Nernroot, the pointy plant that regularly appears in Elder Scrolls games. As all Elder Scrolls fans know, the planet that Elder Scrolls games take place on is called Nern, and Nernroot is native to that planet. That could be something. Unfortunately, if it is, that does probably mean we'll have to collect like 50 of them, so maybe it's not such a great thing. Then there's the adoring fan, a character who shows up in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. You're the best! Can I... can I follow you around? I won't get in the way. And again in Starfield if you choose a specific perk. Victera by Victera by Victera! Coincidence? 
an in-joke, or evidence of something more concrete in terms of these universes being linked. Reddit user HerWTFBlair, on the other hand, thinks Starfield is actually dropping hints about the next Elder Scrolls game, having trawled through one of the Starfield trailers frame by frame and found a tiny shape etched onto the interior of the spaceship. They think this little scratch looks awfully similar in shape to that of High Rock, Hammerfell, and the Iliac Bay, which they theorize could be the location for the Elder Scrolls 6. Here's an image of the region HerWTFBlair provided as a comparison. Is this a hint as to where the next Elder Scrolls game will be set? Probably not, hey. But can you imagine if it was? Mine's blown. It turns out that my lazy description of Starfield as No Man's Sky but with things to actually do might be even lazier than we originally suspected. Truly, if I were any lazier, I'd be American race car driver Buddy Lazier. Hell of a name, that. You see, the thing that originally wowed people about No Man's Sky was the ability to fly seamlessly from the atmosphere of a planet into outer space. And given that Starfield includes both the atmosphere of planets and outer space, plus the spaceships to travel between them, many of us had assumed we'd be flying between the two ourselves in this game as well. Because yes, you can fly it. Not so according to Reddit user Dorado Polito 2, who has effectively ended the debate and debunked that assumption by pointing out that manual atmospheric flight of your spaceship is extremely unlikely, and takeoffs and landings are almost certainly a loading screen with a canned animation of your ship touching down or lifting off. You know, now that I watch those identical animations on different planets, I realise that that might not have just been a stylistic choice for the trailer. In their Reddit thread, Dorado Polito points out that based on dissecting the original gameplay reveal, the process appears to be selecting a star system, then surveying a planet, before selecting to land in a particular spot, at which point a loading screen disguising cutscene takes over. Once you're on the surface of the planet, you can access your unique, customised ship for supplies and storage, but according to this fan theory, you'll only be flying the thing manually in the bits of open space between planets. There go your sci-fi dreams of swooping dramatically to the surface of the planet and frightening the local wildlife. I don't know about you, but I'm so angry I could pass water. Like American race car driver Dick Passwater. Hell of a name. Hey, thanks for watching this video about Starfield fan theories so wild they might actually be true. We won't have to wait long to find out Starfield coming out soon. Keep it locked to Outside Xbox for loads on the game when it does come out. And if you want to watch something else in the meantime, why not check out this Starfield related video here? Or if you want something completely different, something down here for you there to check out as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.